Welcome to the CAFMA Connect Cliff Notes of the Review. I'm your host, Fire Chief Scott Freitag, and with me once again this week is the lovely Assistant Chief of Operations, John Fetima. Lovely. I, I appreciate that. I, John, don't, I don't get that very often. We're getting close to Thanksgiving. I think you should have something to be thankful for. I know you may not hear that at home, so I thought I'd fill in the gap for you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as we do each week, we send out the review on Fridays. That's our internal newsletter for those not familiar. Uh, You can go to our website at cazfire.org and subscribe if you'd like. Uh, Or if you receive it and don't want it, you can unsubscribe unless you work here. Uh, then you have to see it. We know words are hard, so we created the Cliff Notes of the Review uh, type of podcast to walk through this. And as my wife pointed out to me last week, John, she said, I read the review, then I watched the video, and it actually takes longer to watch you guys on video. That may be true. That's unfortunate, but the uh, way it goes. It, you know, it is, but I think you get more from us when you get to see us. <laughs> Maybe more from you. I just sit here and smile and nod. Well, and you know, we, we've talked about this before. You're the reluctant communicator. And you told me at one point, we were talking the other day, and you said you took part in the program when you first started here because you recognized that you had some challenges when it came to <laughs> public speaking. Yep. And so what did you do? Like you say, the, the, not very hard to tell that uh, yeah, communication is uh, not my strong point. I was once told that, uh, you know, some people will talk to say something, other people say something to talk. So I, uh, obviously, the first part is what I, I tend to rely on. But uh, when I first got hired, like you say, I looked at Firepals, and uh, that was something that interested me, partly because going to the schools and teaching the, the kids, and I enjoy kids. I have five of them myself, but uh, with my wife. Right. But uh, That's good. like you say, that was something that interested me. And uh, it helped develop uh, the skills to be able to speak in front of people and think ahead of what was trying to come out of my mouth. Because when I first started, I had planned for it. I had uh, walked through the lesson plan and I had this whole half hour that I had to fill and I filled it in about 15 minutes. And well done. Uh, yeah, so I, I breezed right through it. I was very efficient and uh, got to that point. I'm sitting there and the kids are looking at me like, well, now what are you going to do? And uh, so I went back and I reviewed everything with them. And the nice thing about it, they were kindergarten kids, and uh, they looked at me like, this is all new information. This is awesome. So filled the, the half hour with the two sections, but it, it helped me develop the opportunity to think ahead of what was coming out of my mouth. Right. Side note, um, I put in to be a fire pal, and uh, Captain Fields actually beat me out and he was uh, promoted in front of me. Captain Fields is probably much better fire pal than I am. He's a good communicator. I uh, I tend to hold on to my words. When you say Captain Fields, which one? That's true. Good point. Zach Fields. Zach. Well, Zach is good with words. Yes. He, you know, and I'm on the opposite side of that spectrum, John, in that I tend to use too many words. Hence the review. Yeah, hence the review, and that's why people don't want to read it, because there's too many words in it. So we started this, and now we have cliff notes of the review that's actually longer than if you just read the document. Uh, However, the document is more detailed. And so this week in the review, what I talk about is communications, because I don't think we as the fire service do a good job preparing our folks for positions and moving through the ranks in in regards to the communication uh, requirements what's required of them. We talk to them about writing your reports. We, we understand. And we really don't touch on that as much as we should. But there's a lot more to communication than, than people think about. Mm-hmm. And I'm fortunate to be in the Naval uh, Postgraduate School right now in their Executive Leaders Program. And we had a gentleman uh, by the name of Dr. Alan Weiner, who's a communication specialist, come in and, and talk to us. He has a great book. It's called So Smart But how intelligent people lose credibility and how they can gain it back. And I was reading through this book and I was listening to him speak and I'm like, I need some coaching <laughs> on, on some of this. And so I've reached out to him and he's offered to do a one hour uh, seminar or good. one hour presentation for some of our managers, which is great. Uh, but I really want to bring him in for like the battalion chief Academy or recommend to you guys, you look at him uh, for the fire chief Academy we're developing because there's so much more to your credibility than just being in a uniform. Oh, yeah. What what you wear communicates something to people. And in the fire service, we're fortunate. When we get up in the morning, we don't have to think about 
what am I going to wear today? Sure. We look in our closet and we say, do we want the blue shirt with the blue pants or the blue pants with the blue shirt? <laughs> Which one is it? And our name's on it, so we know that it's ours because we try to be helpful. Like you say, sometimes uh, like you put the uniform on, and depending on your rank, depending on your position, obviously it comes already with a level of credibility sure. that you've done something to get to that point. Now the challenge is what we do with that credibility. Like you say, in terms of our communication and what goes out, what are we doing with the name that's on my shirt? Yeah. And what are we doing with the rank that's on my shirt? And there's a lot of uh, a lot of issues that develop, whether it's in the station or just an organization with communication, poor communication, lack of sure. communication, how you communicate, um, you know, just the, the mannerisms, your facial expressions. There's, like you say, you, you put in the review some of that stuff, and it, there's a whole lot to it that we don't do a good job, like you say, commu- uh, teaching. Because right, you, you can learn from me. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> no. Well, and, you know, even when a firefighter gets up in the middle of the night and responds to a call, if their boots are unzipped and their shirt's untucked, that yeah. sends a message to the people that you're working with, your client, so to speak, the patient, about your level of credibility. When I was on the engine, I always kept my hair super short. Now I keep it short because it's falling out. But I kept it super short because I felt like even if I'm still half asleep at 2 o'clock in the morning, I look like I'm awake, and that's the message that my patient needs. Yeah. So that the appearance says something, especially on first impressions. The way you shake somebody's hand, it's more than just the handshake. It's the eye contact. Sure. It's the words that you choose to use. It's it's the firmness of your handshake, the length of the handshake. All of that makes a difference. The words we choose to use as a mass communications major, and you, you wouldn't know that by <laughs> the way I do things, but you know, I used to, to think I need to use bigger words so I can show that I'm a smart person. Mm-hmm. Now, as a smart person, I shouldn't have to look up bigger words to see what I can use. <laughs> but one of the things that Alan talked about was smaller words, shorter sentences, Um, presentations, as you move up through the ranks, you're going to be giving presentations, whether it's at Firepower, whether it's at the Rotary Club, or if they call you to fill in last minute as the keynote speaker for a large gathering in place of the governor of the state. Um, They were reaching to the bottom of the barrel for that one. (laughs) Is there no one else? Is it? That's what I said. (laughs) Nope, we've tried everybody. You're it. Uh, But you're going to be in these different positions and your ability to stand up and articulate a message in a way that comes across and in a package that people understand. Now, taking a step back from that real quick, we'll talk briefly about just for an example, the the CON process, Certificate of Necessity that we're working on. I know that I need to learn to better package my message with that. After five years of working on this particular issue with our agency, Mm -hmm. I have a lot of background in detail. I know all the arguments for it. I know all the arguments against it. And I try to get them all out at one time. (laughs) And, and what I need to step back and do and say, no, that's, here's the problem. Here's the consequence of that problem. Here's the solution and lead my audience to ask questions uh, for clarification or talk to me on the side but I need to be more succinct. Well, it's no different than uh, sometimes more words doesn't necessarily mean more understanding. And I do appreciate when you use smaller words for me. That, that, <laughs> that helps. But uh, sometimes people feel like whether it's more writing, more words, more talking, especially if you're dealing with a problem employee, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk this person into correction. And it may not be any part of that. It may be more listening. It may be more giving uh, focused communication, planting the seed to where they're asking questions right? or they're um, seeking more information and uh, then they're buying into whatever you're trying to give them. No different whether it's the, the COM process or you're working with an employee that uh, has some performance issues. right? It's uh, more words don't mean more understanding or more competency. Absolutely not. And, and your nonverbal communication yeah. says your nonverbal actually relays 80 to 90 percent of your message. Uh, so more than your words, your nonverbal means something. And the example I use, because let's say we have somebody that has an anger management issue. I'm not saying we do, let's <laughs> say that happens. And they feel like they had some success because they were working with someone that pushes their buttons and they said, I didn't say anything. I'm proud of that. I have a win. But if you were to record them, they're their eyebrows furrowed, their their eyes squinted, their posture. You knew what they wanted to say. Oh yeah, yeah. Their their nonverbal said the whole. They didn't have to say anything. Yeah. 
So not a win, a fail. You need to practice normal face. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes, you lost a million dollars. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll find it. Let's work through it. Yep. There, there's a way to approach these things. And it really is about managing your credibility in many ways, because how quickly do we lose it and how long does it take to gain it back? Absolutely. No different than when you mentioned before, if you show up to a call with your boots unzipped, you may be the mo most competent paramedic or EMT that's on the scene or in the fire service. But the first impression of you at that point is going to be a disheveled mess. And yeah. uh, whether it's true or not, that's going to be the first impression. And that's no different than with the communication part of it. When you're talking to somebody, they're going to their first impression is going to be based on not just your words, but your mannerism and your appearance as well. Right. So in, in this week's review, uh, I talk about communication, but it's from almost a 30,000 foot viewpoint. Um, I don't have anything in there on active listening. I'm, I, I didn't talk about listening in this. I talked about a number of different mannerisms. And ironically, I did it in sections and it actually ended up longer than some of the other reviews that I write, <laughs> but I used smaller words and shorter sentences. I appreciate that. Which made it easier to follow as far as I'm concerned. And you read it and didn't have any problems with it, right? But not that I'm going to admit to you, no. Well, oh, perfect. Um, I, there are no pictures at this point, but That's I mean, uh, I'm just, if I add pictures, it might add a page. And then someone will say, well, it's seven pages this week. That's not what it is. It's only two pages that I wrote. So um, moving on, as always, we add a couple of articles into it. Uh, the, the first article I added this week was seven super revealing things your handshake says about you. And it just goes back to communication. <laughs> I, I briefly touched on handshakes in uh, the chief's desk yep. portion. Um, I think this is a really good article. It's out of Forbes magazine. Uh, the link will be in there so that you can go to it and look at all the different uh, information they have. Uh, the last one I put in, because we're coming up on, I can't remember how many year anniversary it is, uh, but the article is called Hell on Earth, 40 Years Ago, a Historic Fire at the MGM Grand uh, out of the Las Vegas Review Journal. Uh, sometimes I see these articles that, that pop up on the, the historical event and Many times people say, why do you have these codes? Why are we doing this? Why are we inspecting that? And if we remember our history, we're less likely to repeat it. And so I like to share this so people get some of that historical perspective. Yep, that's good. No different than some of the policies we have in place. Yes. Actually, there's something associated with that. Well, and Chief Brad Davis, because I like picking on him, we have the <laughs> Davis light in the fire engines. We do. Yep. Um, so there are policies. Many have names attached to them. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, Chief Davis, where's your hat for your Class A? <laughs> uh, but with that, John, do you have anything else to add? I never do. <laughs> well, we are going to sign off for this week and try to use fewer words as we move forward and make them smaller. Until next week. <laughs>